Just like Shangela, we're back, back, back again. It's a brand new episode of Tops and Bottoms. My name is Joey Mayberry. I am your dad bod demigod. And joining me, as always, is my compadre. He goes by the name of Tommy Purr. Hey, what's up? How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. And, okay, so... Let's go ahead and talk about this before we dive into the actual show, because what we normally do is we come on here, we talk about our wrestling moments, how we feel about them, but I know a lot of people are questioning our interactions on social media over the past weekend, and, you know, I said some things I shouldn't have, you know, we clap back at each other, and... You know, I don't want that to be what's going on here. I want to go ahead and squash it, but I don't want to forget it. So, you know, I'm coming to Las Vegas for Big Valley Wrestling, and that's your hometown, Tommy. So, you know, we had a few back and forths on Twitter where you basically were calling me out and saying that I'm inconsistent, not good enough, all that good jazz. So, no, 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 no. Didn't say not good enough, just said inconsistent. Oh. Well, it at first I saw that, and then I see a lot of other things where you were just discussing my looks, my weight. Um, that wasn't me. That was my friend Kenny. Uh, and I said, no, 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 no. We're above that. We're above that. Although the Chris Christie comment did crack me up only because it was Chris Christie, not because you look like Chris Christie. I thank you, but also... Fuck off. <laughs> but um, I'm going to, Tommy, I, I don't want to have a beef because I don't, I love you. I think you're one of my favorite humans. Well, but the only, I mean, I mean, the only beef is, is the beef in your taco that you're eating right now off camera. Um, but one, they're all gone. I am a fat ass. And two, but you were mentioning how I was weird as of late when the fact is, like, told you I'd be in Arizona and then I also was sick from my second dose of the vaccine so I don't know where that like Joey I, I know you that was not a random little thing that you just said so okay Tom I, I see where this is going and I don't want to get worked up I don't want to get worked up with you I don't want to have any kind of animosity towards you but as I was saying, we're both going to be at Big Valley Wrestling. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we don't need to have a fight, but how about a little bit of friendly competition? How's that sound? I mean, that would sound good. Just I good? mean, that that's, seems like it, it could be a possibility. I mean, I mean, let's not forget the fact that I got you booked on the show. I mean, <laughs> you did you did call me the clout chaser and made mention how you have me on your show as your co-host, which I've never ever disputed that. I've always said this was your show. I'm just here for, I'm just here to be funny. Um, But I mean, you are the one who asked me to try and help you get booked out here. And it was just really funny to me how on Twitter, you just threw that in my face a little bit. No one uses me, which and you're completely valid, completely true. You haven't said, you haven't said anything but the weather. Like that's, Nothing new, completely valid. I'm used to friends like that, kind of just throwing shit like that in my face. Everyone does already, but okay. Let's not let's let's not call me. Let's not call here. me Tommy, no, hold on, reclaiming my time. Oh. Tommy, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. We can go back and forth, but right now, what I'm saying, June 26th, Big Valley Wrestling, Dad Bod Demigod overhyped YouTuber, as some would like to call me. Not me. I did not say that, so don't... I didn't say it was you. I'm saying some. I didn't say it. If it was you, I would have said Tommy Purr, but challenge is out, Tommy. Bring it. (laughs) So you want to face me in my hometown because you're feeling some sort of way because of what other people is that what this is about like someone just caught you on the wrong day and you're just gonna i'm your easiest target so you're just gonna take it out on me because uh to me that's that sounds like kind of like your half-assed way of apologizing 
because you kind of were in your feelings a little bit, which don't get me wrong. I understand being in your feelings. I'm always in my feelings, but like, sound like someone else pissed you off a lot more than me and you decided to just, oh, well, Tommy's right here. So if you want to, if you want to wrestle, we can wrestle. If you want to fight, we can fight. Um, but I'm not interested in just a regular match, you know, cause I, I don't okay. think, I don't think you're fully aware of, of how much, how much you kind of pissed me off a little bit. So when things get a little bit too fucking real in the match, I don't want you running away or asking for referee stoppage. So how about, Mm, no, not a gravy bowl match, not a skin to win match, none of these diva matches that I I'm known for. How about you and me just face off in a, a little bit of a since you're since you're such a big Lita fan, you and I in a leather strap match. Oh, you and me in a leather strap match. This way, you can't fucking run away when shit gets too real. Uh, come take your lashings like the country boy that you are, and when it's all said and done, it's done. Okay. Who wins? It's done. It's over with. It's in the past. Strap match. Strap match. You Strap and me match. get the wrist so you can't run away. Because here's the thing I about it. run away from you. Like, That's what you I, think. You think I would run away from you. You've only known. This isn't even my final form, bitch. You haven't even seen. I, I'm all comedy and okay. ah, diva and sable. Aha. But you, I think you underestimate how much you pissed me off. So. One. Don't call me a bitch. Two, fine, I will face you in this match. Three, strap match is cool because it's the closest you're ever going to get to a strap in professional wrestling. And number four, I don't want to just face you in Las Vegas. I want to beat you in Las Vegas. It's so clever. It's just so cute. First of all, we already know. Someone like me does not need a belt. I don't need that to validate who I am. I don't need that to make myself feel better like some other wrestlers on the indie circuit. All I care about is putting on a good show. But, I mean, if you want to wrestle, I'm completely okay with just beating your ass and proving you that I'm whip smart. So, bring it on. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Uh, I'm not that hard to fucking find. And if you don't like me calling you bitch, how about I just call you Donald? Since we all know... You know, Joy Mayberry is not your real name. Oh, that's how you want to do it? That's how you want Tana. No, to be. Show you how serious I am, Donnie boy. Come on, bring it out to Vegas. You're already booked. You already got your sponsors lined up. I'm very, very proud of you. You are you are sponsored up. I'm sponsored up as well. So let's just make this the most sponsored match at BBW. So. Okay. Okay. Deal. All right, deal. Fantastic. See you now, when I beat you, no hard feelings. It'll be in the past. And if there's a slight chance, a slight chance you could beat me, every every dog has their day. A broken clock is wrong. And broken clock is right twice a day. You may beat me. You, you have a shot of possibly defeating me. Whoever wins, they'll just be there in the past. It's done and over with. Okay. I mean, win or lose... I'm still relevant. So why don't we just go ahead and do the show? Sound good to you, Tommy? Sounds good to me. It'll be my pleasure to help you stay relevant, just like I do every time I show up here. So. That's all I got. I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna feed you anymore. I'm perfectly well, well fed. Look at me. You're well fed, obviously. I'm well fed. I don't need you to feed me. We're good. Okay. Cool. More weight jokes. We're doing great, Tommy. We're doing perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Just so amazing. It's just so good to be here. All right. Well, let's go ahead and play up to the gay stereotypes that other wrestlers say that we totally do. And let's go ahead and be passive aggressive with tops and bottoms. <laughs> I gave my best impression of some of the brightest on the NDC. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, great job, Tommy. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about our tops and bottoms of the week. So, guys, being that we got a little bit of the aggression out, no more ruthless aggression, we're going to talk about some wrestling here because we're going to change up the format just a little bit because watching all of these shows and talking about each and every match, Tommy, I'm sure will agree, is 
fucking exhausting. exhausting <laughs> especially when there's a lot of overlap with Ring the Bell. Uh, and there's also a lot of overlap with other podcasts out there. Um, you can go anywhere and listen to anyone talk about what happened on Impact, NXT, NXT UK, Raw, SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, AEW Rampage, Dark, Elevation Dark, um, Wow, Women of Wrestling, and all kinds of other fucking promotions, ROH now. There's too much out there for us to watch. I have been, been a big proponent of trying to get impact on this because I think they've been doing well, but then that leads to why aren't you covering ROH? Why aren't you covering NXT UK? And the fact is we have fucking lives. You know, um, I have Tommy Likes It in the toy reviews. Joey has the Golden Era podcast, which you should check out. Um, Thank you. Uh, any, any, also check out your toy reviews. Let's yeah. be nice to each other because at I, the end of the day, we might be fighting. Still friends. Listen, I'm know. the only one that can call you a cunt. So when people valid, besides when, my husband, yes, when people jump in on Twitter, like, yeah, you tell that bitch. Listen, listen. Um, I, I, I believe I even said that. I even a oh, poor Mateo got involved. I'm like, I don't need you siding with me. Mateo Valentine did, didn't know who to choose because I'm Asian and you're his tag partner. Let me just say this. Gays will fight. Um, clearly, I didn't unfollow Joey, so it's not that serious. Clearly, he needed a Snickers um, because he's not him when he's hungry. Um, but the thing is, it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm fighting with him and he's not my favorite person right now, but I'm the only one who can talk to him like shit. Not, not you guys. But okay? you still like me more than a lot of other bitches. Like, that's, that's sad. That's sad. As pissed off as I get, I still like you more than half these fucking people who are in my DMs and in my quote retweets. And okay. it's so great. I knew you had to hold back a lot because of your public image and reputation because you had a lot of likes and I had a lot of people just crickets. They were like, mm, just don't get involved. Don't get involved. <laughs> It's fine. Don't get involved, guys. It's between me and ha, so we don't need yeah. Anyways. Oh, I love that. I, I love that saying. I'm, I might let's make a T-shirt. New Tom's merch I'm so coming soon. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, thank you, Will Smith. It's fine. Just like RuPaul says, if no one remembers it, take it and go to the bank. So it's fine now. It's fine now. But that's why we're we're shaking things up. We're just gonna run down. I mean, we can all agree. Raw is just until they start performing in front of a live audience. That's the only thing I can hope for. If shit does not improve once there's a live audience with Raw, there's no hope. So, well, the best so we're talking about Raw, let's go ahead and dive into what we wanted to discuss with Raw. Do you want to bring up your moment first? Um, Shayna Baszler, Reggie, and Alexa. I'm glad there's some follow up with the Alexa thing. Um, Shane, the, it was weird though. I was kind of like, I liked it until Shayna did that. You're just a stupid doll. And then like, it was so awkwardly delivered and then she just leaves. And then I- Wait, and, We're talking last week. Was it this week? See, that's the problem yeah, also. Hey, wow, this, I'm so fucking confused by all the dates and what I'm watching. So get, there, we just got that one out of the way. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So with this whole setup that leads to Alexa Bliss, um, so what happened with Shayna and Reggie on the week that we're technically on was Reggie ran up, Kane was going to come out, wall of fire. Shayna runs up behind him, grabs him by the collar and goes, are you okay? Are you okay? And make sure he's okay. And then gets mad and threatens him and challenges him to a match. I was like, what kind of crazy bipolar mood did we just watch? Where you're just like, are you okay? I hate you. Or I guess that might be our dynamic right now. Maybe, maybe. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. All I know is Reggie's on my screen, and I don't like it. This is a I big fat. Does anyone like? I've heard a few people that are just like, well, Reggie's good in the ring. He does some cool stuff, and I'm like, yeah, he so does some cool so stuff. So does Ricochet. <laughs> exactly. And I'm never going to really knock someone's in-ring performance just because, you know, also a wrestler, I could have a shit match. I'm never going to do anything like that because he has had some kind of wonky things happen. But I'm more irritated with the storyline they keep putting this guy in because it just has been going 
absolutely everywhere. None of it makes sense. And he keeps popping up on my television and it upsets me. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I can really, I mean, the, here's what was interesting, right? I had to refresh what was going on because I watched a little bit of Raw yesterday. So I was like, oh God, I'm, now I'm mixing up what happened with the previous week, as you just saw, and this week. Um, so I typed in like May results for Raw, right? And it brought up last May result, May's results. And I was re reading the results and, until I realized it was 2020 and not 2021. And it's almost the same, like, that's the thing is looking at those matches from a year ago, none of it was out of the ordinary for me. I was like, oh shit, Drew and MVP and Lashley again. And now you're looking at the results from literally last week. And I'm like, they literally have barely changed a fucking thing. Like, let's dive right on into that. Cause that's actually one of the things I wrote down as a talking point was we're getting Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley again. 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 Like, like they tried to interject Kofi into it. Like we thought that Kofi even had like a shot at doing this. It's like you continually build Drew McIntyre to the point where it just looks, he looks invincible and he looks like he's never going to be out of the title picture. And it's playing out exhausting, especially when it's Bobby Lashley, who we have continued to see fight Drew McIntyre. How many times can we watch these guys put on a match? Like, yeah, it's going to be a good match, but it's the same exact match we've seen time and time again. I personally blame WWE for our fight because I think we're just so resentful having to do this podcast and talk about Raw that we're just like, God damn it, I'm so mad. <laughs> so Could you imagine, here, let's live in a fantasy world real quick. Mm. Would you mind reviewing the main event picture of Monday Night Raw if all of a sudden it was Kofi Kingston versus Bobby Lashley? Or would you feel a bit refreshed? At this point, like, they need to do a superstar shakeup. Bad. Bad. We need a lot of new blood in. Um, the rumor is that Finn Balor is, is coming up, back up to the main roster soon. Ooh, which I'd watch a Finn and Lashley match. Raw needs that. Raw needs that injection of just, you know. Also, where is where the fuck is Bray Wyatt been? The Fiend versus Lashley would work, you know. Um, the Fiend versus Drew, while someone else faces Lashley would work. Um, none, I'm just, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. We did the Kofi experiment, but at this point, they have to build him up a little bit more for me to even consider Kofi to be like to go up against Lashley, you know. Well, they continually book Kofi like an underdog, even though he's a previous WWE champion and has been on the roster for how long now? It has to be at least like 12 years. You know what? My fantasy world, Hurt Business is still active, and it's Hurt Business versus New Day with Big E going for the title. That's, That's my... Magical. Magical. Like, magical. like unicorn magic. I know, because that would, to me, be way better. But... What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your next moment that you're going to discuss about Monday Night Raw? This Charlotte Rhea thing. Uh, I know, look, I know Rhea's your homegirl. We all know I'm Team Charlotte, but I'm growing so fucking tired of this. Like, well, it's the same thing. We've How many times are we going to watch these same three women fight? Because, so this is a good topping point. I mean, <laughs> topping point. Um, talking point. Because I wrote down both. Um, segments, which was Nikki Cross challenging Rhea to a two-minute match because of a promo she had with Charlotte Flair, where Charlotte basically said, I could beat Nikki Cross in two minutes, and then Rhea challenged and accepted it to try to prove Charlotte, or one-up Charlotte, rather. Mm -hmm. And Nikki won because it's really hard to beat somebody in two minutes, and I'm really glad they didn't do that. Know, the Bellas did it all the time during the Divas era. <laughs> Yes, they did. Like, um, everyone from the Divas era can beat everyone in two, sometimes 45 seconds. You know? AJ, AJ, AJ Lee's just sitting at home, like, two minutes, nothing. Like... <laughs> with entrances. <laughs> I mean, some people forget, I think Sable versus Jacqueline at Survivor Series when Sable wins the belt, mm -hmm. I think is like a two-minute and 30-second match. That's insane. Which just goes to show you, you can have a great match in two minutes and 30 seconds, you know? 100%. It's just like, okay, um, but... 
but this one was not that. I mean, I was glad that they used Nikki Cross, you know, horrible theme song, Be Damned, but... It's not that bad. <sighs> but here's the thing about the Rhea Nikki Cross match that still gets me to, like, even, it's been, what, two weeks now? Um, yeah. Or a week and a half? <laughs> it's just Rhea Ripley pushes Nikki Cross down and then taps her wrist and goes, TikTok, Nikki. I'm like, no, this is, she's going to win. <laughs> like, that's not how this match works, girl. And then Karrion Cross shows up and kills her. Um, <laughs> like TikTok. 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 And some children dance to a freaking song in the background. TikTok. Yeah, him in his weird gladiator attire. I just can't right now. We'll get to him in a second. But anyway, uh, I'm glad, like, Nikki, like, she got a win because, like, the time ran out on Rhea. That's all good. She celebrated like she had just, I mean, she did just defeat the Raw Women's Champion. No lie. That's also another talking point I wanted to address compared to Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce cut that fiery promo, give me Asuka, why not me? Why not me? And then they bring her out and she did the whole sullen thing and had a very forgettable match with Asuka. Nikki, at least, like, comes out, gets to do her thing, and actually, like, plays it up like this, ooh, this is WrestleMania victory. Like, at least committed to the, the damn thing, you know? Um, Are we also seeing kind of a return of Crazy Nikki? Hopefully. Well, I know a lot of people want to see her back with Alexa and have Lily possess Nikki. I think that's just a little too much. But... Um, it's too on the nose. It's too on the nose. I would prefer Paige. Um, Paige has been mysteriously quiet for a while as of late, you know? Um, but I would like to see that, but I, yeah, Nikki being like Lily is too on the nose. It's too predictable. Um, I would like to see crazy Nikki, but like fun, crazy Nikki. Like, yeah. I remember like one time Luna went crazy. Maybe you'll cover this on the golden era podcast, but I think, well, I don't know. We started Trish Stratus on golden era. So Luna's long gone. Oh yeah. Luna's long gone. So, well, like Luna was just before golden era too. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was Stephanie's wedding present. I think it was, but like Luna brought her a taxidermied squirrel <laughs> in a segment. Like I want crazy shit like that. Like, ah, look what I got for you. Like just crazy shit like that would be fun. I mean, I want crazy shit, but I also want solid wrestling matches, which is something we did get when Asuka fought Charlotte. Cause I'm it's hard to really hate on Oscar Charlotte getting repeated over and over when they keep turning it out. Like they have good matches. Like even the stuff they pull out though, is like, um, you know, when I said, I love Charlotte pulling out the, um, L E the low elbow constantly. Now that makes me happy. And the moonsault, the, the moonsault into the standing moonsault was wonderful. The, push the lift and the knee drop into the stairs and then working that knee throughout the match. These women just, they flow so well with each other. And the thing I love about watching them is it seems like a natural fight. It doesn't really seem like a choreographed thing. And that's really hard to do with someone. Well, they also have that pre-established history. So mm -hmm. that's, that's also what's good. It's pre-established, but also God, it makes no sense to me that now Charlotte is facing Rhea just because she beat Asuka when the week before Asuka beat her. And somehow that means Charlotte is now facing. That's what boggles my mind. Just put them in the hell in the cell. Literally, like, please, please, for the love of God, just put them somehow, just get them into the cell because that will make this at least, this will make it, okay, now we got to watch this. We know Rhea and Charlotte can have a good match, but put it in, in the cell and it freshens it freshens it up a little bit to where people will actually watch it. Do you want to know a lovely idea that I had? And it just won't happen, but I would love to see it happen. Fatal four way in the sale. Oscar, Nikki Cross, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley. I'd well, watch that in beat. Oscar does have history with Nikki from NXT. So and they had a tremendous street or last man standing match. Mm -hmm. So that would that could be cool. You know, I would love it. It would just be something different. And it would kind of, you know, that triple threat between the three was just like, okay, this is too much. I don't want to see them. But you toss in Nikki Cross, who's completely out of left field. Oh, yeah. Shake it up enough and put it in the sale that I'm instantly inter interested. 
Well, that's what I used to miss about WWE and um, their title picture back in the Attitude Era is mm -hmm. you would have three like different feuds going on and they would somehow all converge on the belt. So you'd have like six way matches and five way matches, fatal fours, you know, a combination of all six guys. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the problem with this is that they focus on like two girls. They go for the belt. There's huge, sometimes a secondary feud, but like if you have three feuds going at once, you can have it naturally like converge into a six way hell in a cell, uh, an elimination chamber match, you know, um, a ladder match, like something like that, you know? I mean, they totally could do that because they've had the women's tag team championships pretty much intertwined with the Raw Women's Championship for the better part of almost a year now, honestly. Mm -hmm. But now yeah. we have a defined line in the sand between the tag team girls and the singles girls. You know? It's a while to get there, but you know what they need to do? Get Shayna Baszler out of that damn tag team title picture and get her facing Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair and Asuka and damn it, we need her there. Which I think, and I think they're, um, I, I hate to kind of spoil what's already happened last night on Raw, but it's like, I feel like that's what they're going to be doing with Shayna and Alexa is bringing them into that fold with the main tier girls. Because if you think about it, Alexa's always mm -hmm. been, Ale Alexa's always been one of the main tier girls, even though she's kind of, dog down as like the less talented one in the ring um but the fact is could you imagine could you imagine you're building up nikki and now you're splitting Shayna away from naya which now makes naya a single star and you bring alexa into it with the supernatural elements so and now you have seven singles girls who like alexa has history with naya she has history with nikki she has history with charlotte she could work well with Asuka as well as Rhea. Asuka's Rhea already eliminated her from the Royal Rumble. Asuka's also already fucking creeped out by Alexa with the yowie wowie thing, you know? And then um, then you got all... Alexa pretty much has history with all the girls. So it kind of, like, ties everything together. You can have a lot of crush matchups. Shayna versus Rhea, that's money. Shayna versus Asuka one-on-one, -on -one, that's money. Um, Shayna versus Charlotte. Like, I'm amazed that we haven't received that yet. I'm honestly offended that we haven't seen that yet because that match is maybe they're wanting to save it, maybe they're wanting to do something else. But Plus, you also have Daddy Deville just like waiting in the wings. You just have her. You know, some shit's gonna go down with Sonya Deville. She's just waiting. You know, I mean, we're both figure people. I know. God, why don't they give us Sonya Deville in a suit yet? Uh, you know, it has to be elite in a suit. I don't want one of the basics in a suit because they look at the, what they did with Alexa. It was really bad. But um, I didn't buy that one. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, give me give me Sonya Deville in, as an elite in a suit and I'll be happy. But um, yeah, you got eight girls right there that you can build a whole main event division around because the tag team division is good. Like everyone's established, you're good. Just, just do a solid storyline other than I'm going for the belt. Oh, 100%. Well, since we spent so much time fighting at the beginning, let's go ahead and jump to AEW and talk a little bit about what's happening in their scene. So AEW this week, of course, was double or nothing. And on, AEW went all out for <laughs> they went all out for double or nothing. Wow, great job, Joey. Good journalism. Uh, but they did. There's not as much. You can't really say anything other than that. They had the entire Double or Nothing weekend. They announced all the figures. They were really, really just hyping up this show as their WrestleMania, pretty much. I, I mean, and I think maybe that's also why WWE was kind of like going kind of light on the booking. Was I mean, to be fair, they're probably like, ah, they got their they got their WrestleMania. Let's go like, because if you notice, like when WWE had their whole week of WrestleMania, AEW did pull back a little bit on their stuff too. It was like, well, let's not do all this right now. We want the most eyes on our product as possible, which is smart, you know? Oh, it's 100% smart. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the AEW stuff that we got, because you know what I have to talk about was just that pop that Adam Page got at the top of Double or Nothing was the most I, maybe I just haven't heard a crowd pop in a while because the only crowd I've really seen was WrestleMania besides AEW's like fans that are just dangling from the rafters up there in the top during the weekly show. 
But when Adam Page walked out, I thought Riho and Serena D were getting like these crazy crowd reactions. But oh my God, I was just like, God, I've missed crowds. I've missed oh the crowds so much. It brought so much to that show. Just Lord. And then, I mean, Adam Page had a great match, but like just the pop itself made me so invested in that entire show because it started it off with a bang. Yeah. I, and here's the thing. It's like, oh, look at the pops they got. Look, everything's reopened and everyone, like WWE is going to get the same pops. You know what I'm saying? The minute they go back out, as much shit as everyone's like, WWE is going to die in five years. Slow your roll. Calm down. Seven um, days. Seven days. Um, getting the pops on the return, that's what's, like, I, I have no doubt WWE and AEW can sustain massive pops for, like, a couple months, you know, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, that's when now when things are back to normal by Christmas and have been normal for a couple months, and then we're gonna be holding your feet to the coals. Like, get your shit together. Like, now you can't just pipe it in, you know. Like, stay consistent. Consistent. You know and so you brought up pipe it in. It's gonna be so nice to not be told who to cheer for anymore or who to boo, mm -hmm. like. Because, good lord, when people walk out and I'm just like, oh, this promo is great, but you've got a chorus of boo in the background. I'm just like, that's not what would be happening right now. Or, you know, it's going to be really great. Watch, uh, I can't wait for with AEW. No more of the fucking wrestlers in the audience getting themselves over with their really shit reactions and pulling my focus. Like, mm -hmm. and we discussed it on some of the matches where they're just like, oh, in front of the camera. I'm like, stop, stop. I know that, like, you didn't get to be on dark this week, but can you just like, <laughs> like a regular person? Um, I am going to miss the look of the Thunderdome. I also with NXT, I just love how they, how cool it looks in NXT. But um, the crowd reaction they have in NXT, I wouldn't mind if they kept that the same. Same here, because I just think it looks so fucking cool. Um, mm -hmm. Would I, I the reaction was great, but we expected that, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's a little bit of shade, um, but I'm kind of like, Florida, why are you acting like y'all haven't been open this whole time? Like, right? <laughs> I will say this about, uh, I, I mean, I love me some Brian Cage, I love me some Adam Page, I love me some Page in a cage with Diamond Dallas Page. Um, <laughs> Makes your bone go rage. <laughs> yeah, Christian Page and Ethan Page. Um, um, but it, it's like, it, I'm glad he got that reaction because I think they both should be in the main title picture. Um, so yeah, uh, it was good. Like, I can't really say anything bad about Page and Cage, you know? Well, what do you have to talk about from AEW this week? What's your talking point? That fucking, uh, first off, I hate Stadium Stampede. I, I'm like, whatever, whatever. But that repelling from the scoreboard as an entrance was fucking cool. Was, was really, really cool. Fucking dope. And I just, I was like, if that were me, I'd be like, fuck you. I am not repelling from, I don't do heights. I don't do heights at all. And so you would, it just would have been me probably clinging to like, Jake Hager's back because he's the biggest one screaming the entire way down. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but that entrance was so fucking dope. It was really cool. There was there was some lulls in the match, which is always to be expected when you're doing like ma matches from like room to room and it's live, it's not pre-recorded. And right. anytime you have weapons involved, there's always gonna be a bit of a what we like to call a prop malfunction. I've experienced it a lot where shit does not go the way it's intended. So yeah. yeah. So I can't, I'm not going to fault them for that, but the repelling, they were smart to close out the show with that. I thought that was the, 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 the world heavyweight title match was good. Mm -hmm. um, but they were smart to close out with the stadium stampede. Oh, stadium stampede. The pinnacle versus inner circle has been the storyline for AEW. For some time now. Like they headline blood and guts. This has been building. MJF and Chris Jericho had a damn musical number. Like this has just been the storyline for I enjoyed this a lot more than Blood and Guts. Oh, hundred percent. But you know what I think the highlight of the match was for me, no lie, was it going off the air with just the entire arena singing freaking um 
Judas. Like, it just made my life. Yeah, but I don't really like Judas. So it's kind of like, to me, it doesn't really, like, resonate as much as, like, when they did it with Sami Zayn's theme or Robert Roode's glorious theme. Like, yeah. you know... I don't mind Judas. It's just become like this icon wrestling song at this point. I didn't hate it at all. Uh huh. But you know what I got to talk about? I got to talk about the three most famous letters in professional wrestling yeah, today. It's on my list too, so you might as well hit it now. D M D. That Britt Baker is the most over superstar in AEW. I say hands down. Freaking challenge me to it. Say I'm wrong. I know people on the internet are going to be like, what? But no, Britt Baker is the most over person right now. And thank God because she's breathing some life into AEW's women's division. Yeah, it's just like, oh, poor Sheeta. Like, we really waited for a crowd to just get that belt off. Like, I'm, I'm, this is no, no disrespect to Sheeta. Um, no disrespect to her talent whatsoever. Her reign was pretty forgettable. And that's what was so sad. It was so sad because I really felt like she got the Jacqueline treatment. Um, when the women's title got reinstated in 1998, they didn't even have a belt for Jacqueline until like the week before she dropped it to Sable or something. And it's like they gave her the, she had the belt and then they come out with the bigger and nicer belt. And then she just drops it to Brit. Like that was, and you can she'd have fought her ass off in that match. Like, you know what I think would have made Sheeta's reign a little bit better? No lie. They should have kept the middle on. Joey, you're frozen, Joey. Give it a second, guys. I think Joey froze. I think he's frozen. I'm in the show, but is Joey in the show? He's frozen. I think I'm back. All right, you're back now. Oh, God. I'm so fucking done with my internet. It's um, all Mercury retrograde. It's all technological stuff. I had the same thing happen. Um, but they needed to let Nyla keep that belt for longer than she did, become like this unstoppable force, and then have Sheeta actually be able to defeat her, which they didn't, I think, let Nyla do that for long enough. They, like, really, really tried to do that, but they also had the same predicament that they had. They really only had Nyla face Chris Statlander, and that was really about it. So yeah. she didn't really become this horror, like, this big threat. She just became this woman who was beatable. You know what I mean? And I think that was a real detriment to bringing Sheeta into her own. Well, not just that, AEW is more interested in booking people like champions from elsewhere better. Like yeah, Thunder Rosa. Rosa. And Thunder Rosa. Exactly. It's like, why don't you focus on your own champ first? You know? I don't know if they thought that, oh, let's build up these other champs to make Sheeta look better too. I don't know. But to me, it just seemed like, no, it just seemed like you're giving more focus to someone else other than the person representing you, you know? Yeah, but Britt Baker with this title now, hopefully. They can't deny her. They really can't at this point. Britt Baker seems like a smart businesswoman, too. I have no doubt that she will probably be in there fighting for better storylines and being working more closely with certain girls, you know? How can you not give her a storyline, though, too? Because, honestly, she's one of the few women... Like, even when she wasn't active, she had an active storyline that people were invested in. I mean, look at Asuka. In WWE, it's possible. 
I go, how could you not give someone like Asuka a good storyline? It is entirely possible. It is entirely possible, but I do have a bit more faith in AEW than I do Monday Night Raw. No lie. Um, but well, when it comes to the women's division, that. That. Um, any <laughs> other AEW highlights that you had from this week? Jungle Boy went in the Casino Battle Royale, which that match was only going to be as good as it could be. Like, it's always going to be a cluster. I the, the whole rules, like, I remember the first year, I was like, what the fuck's going on? You know? Uh, half the time. Oh, sometimes I rewatch that battle, the first one, and I'm like, what a mess. Like, it almost, <laughs> like, if I was out there, it'd be me going, like, asking the other wrestlers. I'd probably be turning to, like, Jungle Boy, being like, I'm part of this group, right? Like, I'm, I'm supposed to be out here with you guys, right? Right? I'm not going to get in trouble, right? You know, like, I'd be, like, asking everyone. But, uh... What do you mean I was a diamond? <laughs> shit. I was a spade. I thought it was a club. They're both black. I didn't know. Like... Oh, my God, Tommy. <laughs> no, for the longest time, I didn't know the difference between a spade and a club. Now I do. Uh, and thank you, Shannon Baszler. It helps me a lot more now. Uh, <laughs> I used to think that club, I called clubs clovers for the longest time and no one corrected me. They weren't your real friend. I'd be like, you dumb fuck. That is a <laughs> <laughs> You stupid fuck. That's a club. Those aren't your real friends. That's the problem. I'm glad Jungle Boy won. That was really cool. Um, good to see him get it. Um, I was so happy when Matt Hardy got eliminated. I'm like, get off my TV. I'm so over you. Go away. <laughs> As we like to say on the Golden Era podcast, Jesus, Matt. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. Uh, other AEW stuff. I mean. All I wrote down were Adam Page and Britt Baker. No lie. Those were my moments. Orange Cassidy doing a flipping senton to the outside with his hands in his pockets somehow not killing himself, rolling gracefully onto his back, getting up with his hands in his pockets, getting into the ring and kipping up. I'm like, holy shit. Like, There's so much talent in AEW. Just so much. And I, I'm so excited for things like Elevation and Rampage and these other shows, just so we can get to showcase more people and more things. Because it seems like Dark and Elevation – are honestly just there to try to get AEW's, like, students on TV. Can we also discuss how Cody somehow made himself the heel in his own storyline? <laughs> Cheers. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm so lost on Cody Rhodes. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I, I, I don't hate him. I don't love him. I'm just kind of like, boy, your storyline is harder to follow than the freaking plot of the movie Signs. Like, holy <laughs> <laughs> that promo, I was like, ah, no. And he's like, I workshopped it. I go, the fuck you did. You workshopped it with the wrong people. Like, like who did you workshop that with? I, I, yeah, I like, I think, I think to quote Mateo Valentine, uh, I'll go, I'll go beat his ass. I was like, <laughs> I go, wow, Cody, you just effectively made yourself the heel completely by accident. Like, Mm-hmm. And then and I was like, oh, oh my God. Just wow. Wow. That's all I have to say about that one. And I mean, I, to be honest, if anyone was, should be a heel in um, professional wrestling, it's Cody freaking Rhodes. Oh, it should be Cody. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, just come on. Come on. Um, I think that's pretty much it that I have for AEW. Well, then let's go ahead and move to NXT, and we need to do that for the sake of time anyway, because we try to keep this thing at an hour, and we just kept fighting, Tommy. It's what we did. Um, let's go ahead and talk about some NXT moments. NXT. Program one. We, I honestly, the only thing I'm interested in right now, NXT is good. The end. Action's always good. Can't really fault them. Can't complain anything. It's all, all I care about right now is that storyline between Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis. That's all I care about. You're an index stan? Index stan, exactly. Like uh, the promo from the week before last, I believe, it was probably when I was in Arizona, um, when all of his drawings of his broken heart are all over the room and it was very psycho stalker-ish. I was like, 
I I dig that. That's so fucking cool. It was like, uh, but honestly, it was a little sad too. It was very moving. It is really sad. I was like, oh, but that's the only thing I care about. What do you have written down? Oh, and Frankie Monet's debut. That's what I wrote down because okay. I was like, wait, you didn't write down Frankie Monet, the bougie one, the girl here's that what, came out in that coat. Here's that what bothers coat. me. Here's what bothers me is I used to come out with coats like that, right? You've seen the photos and shit. I wanted to do it again, especially for the, the Pride shows this month, but now I can't because, you know, every fucking queer on the wrestling circuit now is suddenly going to be doing the pin, and it's called the pinois, the feathered robes or their pinois. Um, yeah, I know my negligees. Um, and um, Fredericks of Hollywood, holler. So um, I, I can't. You want to know why? It's because it's like, well, that's what I did before. And I want to do it for pride, but I can't because, you know, every fucking gay wrestler is going to start doing it. So, I mean, a lot of them already try to do it. So, look, if you're wearing, re if you're wearing a fucking pinois, this, I'm going to get so mad and coming out in wrestling shoes with no boot covers, we got a fucking problem. Stop. Right I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to one-up you. I am changing my ring name to Chris Penwall, and I am going to do whatever I want. Can you just change it to not Chris Penwall, but Crispin Wah? <laughs> like Crispin Glover. Crispin Wah? Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, Crispin Wah. <laughs> I hate that's my new drag name. <laughs> it's Crispin Wah. Mine is gonna be uh, Mark Carano from HR. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come on, Karen from finance. <laughs> I'm gonna come out in Alaska Thunderfuck trash bag and tour, and then I'm gonna reveal it. It's gonna be all of Mickey James's outfits. Be like, yes. <laughs> Mickey James point. No, okay, so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about some SmackDown because that we, we didn't write much for NXT, but I only wrote one thing for SmackDown too. And you know why I only wrote one thing for SmackDown? Because only one thing happened. Well, not a lot happened. I did like a lot of what happened on SmackDown, but the Usos versus Street Profits match was fun. It was entertaining, but it was an hour long. You know what I kept wondering. Are they just stopping like their the match during the commercial break while they're in the Thunderdome? Because there's no way these guys win as hard as they did there's for that. No fucking way I would last at all. I get I get winded going to the ring. Um, so I <laughs> good to know for our match. I know. Uh, yeah, right? That's why I'm like I'm like, can Joey come out last because this way I can catch my breath while he's doing his entrance. Uh, <laughs> Can you keep up? Oh, let's lose my breath. I was about to sing Beyonce again. Uh, but, uh... Ben Balor's music is called Catch Your Breath. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I, I, I don't care about his music. I don't care about his delicious booty. But, um, yeah, that match, like, was long. And I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? Do, like, are they going over on time and just don't give a shit, you know? It wasn't bad. No. I mean, you don't go over that much on time. You just don't. Like, that was that was planned. Yeah, I was like, okay, it was good to see Carmella uh, against Bianca. But here's the thing. Reginald has more time than Bianca, I mean, than Carmella. Reginald's been featured more than Carmella since the debut. Why? Why? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know, Crispin. I can't answer that for you. I, Why? <laughs> Why can you answer? Why? <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna call oh, every queer who comes out in those robes from now on. I'm like, ah, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming out in running shoes without boot covers and you're wearing that thing, if you can afford those, because those robes are expensive. Like the cheapest is like eighty bucks. I'm letting you know if you can afford that, but you can't afford fucking boot covers or wrestling boots or something that looks good with your gear or like legitimate gear, then you need to rethink your your life. Well, do you remember like five years ago when for some reason all the gay wrestlers were wearing Chuck Taylors and we couldn't figure out why? Oh, like, oh, yeah, I was like, uh, no, no, yeah. no. 
guys, like, come on. Come on. And, like, and like I get it. I've worn fishnets in the ring. I get it. I don't do it so much anymore because they're a pain in the ass to get off. And when I finish a match, I just want to get out of my gear as fast as possible. Um, some of you can pull off fishnets. I just, this is a public service announcement. Not all of you are Effie. So, please, don't. It works for Effie because he can pull it off and some others can pull it off too, like Jamie Lynn Senegal, you know? She can pull off fishnets. The rest of you need to just find your own thing. <laughs> yeah, do a thing. Well, you know what's really... So, do you have any other points to bring up on SmackDown before we get... No, it just it seemed mostly focused on the Usos and Roman, and I'm glad because the Usos have been really good. So, it's this whole, like... Will Jay or won't he stick by Roman's side or will he choose his brother? You know? Yeah. And I can tell you, Tommy, I know we're going to have a match. I know we're fighting. And being fellow gay wrestlers, it's, you know, we're probably going to cross paths more than once. But to be honest, since it is the first day of Pride Month today, and every promotion is going to be like gung ho for us because they're just like, oh, we got to bring in the gay wrestlers this month. Just because someone is gay, a little flamboyant, or, you know, even effeminate, anything that you want to call it, doesn't mean that we're all freaking Sunny Kiss, that we're all Effie, that we're all anyone else. Like, people, I've had so many people compare me to freaking Sunny Kiss recently, and I'm just like, Sunny is so talented. I am so excited. That you are so Sunny. on the opposite spectrum of Sunny Kiss. It's that's it's it's that's also what I mean. it's, it's like I don't even do. I don't look like Sunny. I don't act like you don't Sunny. Don't like Sunny. You don't dress like Sunny. That's all. What I also don't like is a lot of the gay black wrestlers um, get kind of like they get automatically compared to Sunny just because they're all gay and black. And I'm like that's. No, no, no. You know, that's like saying Stockhold and Kurt Angle are the same just because they're bald and white, you know? This, it drives me nuts. And it's, since it's Pride Month, if you're going to these shows and you see openly queer talent, don't be like, oh my God, I love this person because we don't want to hear it. <laughs> We just don't, like, we respect all these people, too. I love all my fellow LGBT brethren and sisterin and theyrin. I love them all. But I, I'm not like that. We're just not. I'm not like most gays. Damn it. <laughs> I have that shirt. Check storefrontier.com backslash merchandise, and that shirt design is available for purchase. I'm not like most gays. I need to buy that because that's what I call my leg drop. Yeah. There you go. I'll have it on there in the parody style of Nia Jax's shirt. So. I love it. Well, it is Pride Month and Tommy I can't, Bird, I a little bit of wine. I love you, but right now I hate your guts. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, uh, I, can't, I can't wait for Pride to be over so we can go back to being ashamed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a you and I had an exchange on Twitter like months ago and someone in my message requests uh, a fellow Asian queer. I don't know who they are. They have seven followers. So whatever. They're just like your internalized homophobia needs addressing. And I, and I was just like, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 how can I be an internalized homophobe when I brag about taking dick every week? I, that makes no sense to me. Whatever. I just, the I, dick's I, internal. Uh, inter oh, internal. Uh, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Look, look, I hate everyone equally. Like, just because, <laughs> that's what I don't like. Just because we are gay, it does not mean we're friends. Just because we're friends. Us. I hate you, but we're friends right now. <laughs> but yeah, like, I can hate my friends. It's completely fine. Um, you know, it's, it's fine. But just because we all suck dick or whatever does not mean we're all actually in the same community. Does that and make sense? Oh, 100%, because yeah. there's plenty of people that suck dick that I just don't like. There's plenty of people who suck dick who are voting against our rights. So. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk about Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about no Ted Cruz. What was that, Matt Gates dude? I'm like, come on, like. I mean, just, just saying. Any, I, I'm going to get sued. I'm going to get us banned. Then Joey's really going to hate me. 
but anyway, you can find me on social media on Instagram at the underscore man underscore diva. You can find me on Twitter at rare underscore form, R A W R underscore form. I tried to get my old name back, the, uh, the underscore man underscore diva, but someone, I guess, is using it as a screen name, but not as a username, and it won't let me change it back. And I'm like, and I purposely was just going to do it for this show because I got tired of having to, you know, say a different name every time. Um, I already told you about my store, Frontier Merchandise. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash officially perfect. Joey, where can people find you? Jesus, you can find me having a panic attack via all the stuff I do at Joey underscore Mayberry on Instagram and Twitter. Joey dot Mayberry on TikTok, where Tyler and I went viral yet again this week. You can find me at um, on the Golden Era podcast each and every Friday alongside Jake Smith, everyone's favorite Bella Stan. You can find me every Saturday on Ring the Bell Live, where I host a women's wrestling discussion with a lovely panel of people. And you can buy my merchandise at teespring.com backslash Joey Mayberry. Just Google me, bitches. <laughs> I know. I had to look up my Patreon, which is going to go live soon, multiple times. I think I have it written down. If you guys are interested, it's somewhere on here. Oh, my God. I feel so old. Where are my glasses? Please I, think, ask more. I think my Patreon is patreon.com backslash Tommy underscore per. Mm-hmm. I think find me i don't know i have, don't have anything yet but i'll have toy reviews and podcasts and interviews and things and writing and things like that so come and find us we ain't that hard to find and you can also find us at big valley wrestling in las vegas nevada on june 26 where we're just gonna have some friendly competition uh some i mean just a little you know whip his ass you know so just like Trish used to do to Lita, just whip Joey up and down the ramp, up and down the ring, all over the place. Who knows? Maybe I'll break down and buy my new pinois <laughs> and make my little Frankie Monet entrance and listen to everyone talk about how I ripped her off, even though I was doing that years ago. But whatever. All right. See you in a month when I beat your ass. Okay, everyone. See you later. Bye.